It is the second model introduced in the 2024 Bang Brave Braveburn collaboration, featuring another iconic character of Superbia. It is BRV-01 Warrior Pride, with a kit of Assault Boost, Cross Shock, Shotgun, Light Legs, and the Leg Ability of Assault which converts a percentage of the leg's shoot and melee resist stats into base power when using scatter type skills. Now, the first thing you're going to notice about Warrior Pride is it's going to have a very similar kit to another collaboration model that we've seen fairly recently. And if you're guessing Shin Getter from the Go Nagai collaboration, you win, well, an internet cookie, I suppose. But basically, Warrior Pride takes, the, takes, takes a page out of Shin Getter's book, but instead of applying it to AoE-type skills, Warrior Pride instead puts an emphasis on Scatter-type skills. Skills that'll da that will damage one part normally and then spread the damage to others at one-third additional damage. Assault Boost, on the, and the only new skill being introduced on Warrior Pride, is a support-based skill that upon activation will boost the success and power of scatter-type skills by 80% as long as the skill remains active. And, much like it is with Hull Boost and Shin Getter, it cannot be stacked multiple times. So once the buff wears off, you will need to reapply it before you get that damage and success boost again. Now this, is not, this mostly will apply to any kind of scatter-type skill. This includes not just Cross Shock and Shotgun as he comes equipped with, but Gatling, Giga Gatling as examples, Mega Gatling, um, Claw, char Charge Claw, lots and lots of opportunities that can be that can capitalize on this, just based on the kind of possibilities alone of what scatter type skills are available. Cross Shock on the right arm is a melee attribute scatter type skill that is also a guaranteed hit and critical hit on top of that. So it's going to be a very powerful blow no matter which way you look at it. And one other thing to mention about Cross Shock, though, is that a number of patches ago, it did actually get significantly nerfed, primarily on the grounds that it now had a no dodge and a no defend penalty on cooldown, just to kind of curb a lot of people abusing it because it did not actually have that particular penalty before. But if you have the right shielder on the team, you can, for the most part, circumvent that weakness pretty easily. But because it is a melee based skill, it does give you a pretty solid base damage output at almost 2k by itself, and not heavy at that, might I add. And it is also worth noting that scatter type skills also found a very solid variety and, and utility as shield shredders. So basically, anyone that has a shield charge of at least 3 or higher, or, or 3 or lower, I should say, will have their shield charges reduced to zero and basically waste their charges as the way to prevent them from being able to spam it more than once. Shotgun on the left arm is a shooting attribute scatter skill that play basically is like cross shock but for shooting attacks, but this one has a little more of a caveat to it. Shotgun may not have the cooldown penalties that cross shock does, but it has a damage bonus that is relative to the time that you hit your target. If you are able to successfully hit a target that is facing you in your heat in their heat phase, you will deal extra damage and a critical guaranteed critical hit on top of that as a as a reward for being able to face your target head on point blank range. If you fail to do so and only attack your target from the backside in their cooldown phase, it instead will be treated as a standard Gatling based attack. Nothing special, but you will still have the penalty on cooldown as you would before anyway. But with a base power in the mid 1600s. Even as a basic Gatling attack, that's not too terrible either. Now, be, albeit this one does have a little more of a juggling effect than Cross Shock does, both attacks are still pretty nasty no matter which way you look at it, especially given that both, not, neither also are heavy parts either. Flight Legs means that he'll have pretty decent coverage across most terrains, but have an incredible emphasis on high mobility and, high e and especially high evade on top of that. And that is only evident here as well by the particular stats that we see on Warrior Pride. But I will get to those in just a moment. With a head HP of about 3600, arms about 3419 each, and leg at 3539, kind of in that par for the course range that you would expect. 
for a lot of um for, for a lot of flight based models but especially ones that kind of want to focus on armor despite being focusing on high agility as well as you'd expect of a flight leg now naturally because it is a flight based leg he will not sport any particular heavy parts and as a flight leg he will also be susceptible to anyone using anti-air so do exercise a little caution on team selection on the enemy side if you are planning to use warrior pride in this fashion when it comes to his leg stats, he's packing about 1068 for that base mobility, so off to an incredibly good start when it comes to, to when it comes to base speed before any other modifiers hit the field. An evade of almost 2100 is also very, very nice though, as it means he's going to have an even higher focus and emphasis on dodging or grazing. Very similarly to say Luminous Stag or even Alba Noel's meta change form as examples which means once they're in the air, it's going to be almost impossible to land anything consistently because their dodge is going to be so high compared to your likelihood of hitting. A melee and a shoot resist equally at 1038 isn't too shabby though, as it means that he'll have a pretty balanced range between close range and long range, but given that he is basically an all-rounder type, this does actually work to his advantage. And... The leg ability of Assault only ties into his overall kit pretty solidly, much like it will with Shin Getter from the Go Nagai collaboration. That being said though, as a pure set score, I honestly still have to rate Warrior Pride a pretty well-rounded 8 out of 10. It is a very incredibly synergetic kit unto itself, because you can use Assault Boost on turn 1 basically immediately to get that 80% boost to success and power, and you get an additional roughly about 20% or so extra power from bait relative to the resist stats on warrior pride's legs so you're getting almost an so you're getting roughly almost a 100 percent boost to power instead just between those two alone and would you look at that frost shock and shotgun are both scatter type skills so he's a model that is that can be very readily used right out of the box with no real setup required as long as you can afford him that one turn to use assault boost to get himself going as mixed parts, I do have to rate him just a little bit lower at a 7.5 out of 10, primarily because all of his, all of his parts actually can be very, very put, can be put to very good use if utilized correctly. But it does require you to be a little picky with your team builds. Cross shock and shotgun really don't have any real issues. You can use them anywhere with no problems, especially because they are non-heavy. But assault boost and the flight length with assault are going to be very picky. So if you are going to use either of those or even both of those together, I'm going to very heavily encourage that you try to make sure that you build around that emphasis on scatter type skills. Otherwise, anything else that you choose to put on Warrior Pride is essentially not going to benefit from that bonus. And let's be real, an almost 100% bonus to success and power, that's going to be really hard to argue against if you're trying to equip him with anything but scatter type parts.